with season 6 complete, it's time for an update of our list of the very best Game of Thrones episodes, so sit back and get ready to disagree in all caps because dark lists bring dark words, and winter is about to explode all over the place. Here are the top 10 episodes of Game of Thrones. Number 10. After 4 seasons, Game of Thrones finally gave us a wedding reception we could rejoice over. King Joffrey, a complete pain in the ass until the very end, choked to death while engaging in one of his favorite pastimes, tormenting Tyrion. The young dim brute died in agony, clutching his throat. George R. R. Martin couldn't have planned it better. Well, he did in more ways than one, we suppose, since he wrote the episode. Yes, the author who robbed us of so many heroes finally wiped one of the show's most foul villains off the map. And it was glorious. Number 9, and now his watch is ended. Season 3, Jamie was forced to wear his severed hand around his neck, Margery began her manipulation of Joffrey, Theon got tricked by Ramsay into thinking he was escaping, and Lord Commander Mormont of the Night's Watch was killed during a dastardly mutiny at Craster's Keep. All that and Daenerys made off with an army of 8,000 unsullied soldiers after she turned her dragons loose on the slave masters of Astaper. Number 8, The Mountain and the Viper. Season 4. In the Mountain and the Viper, Daenerys discovered Jorah's betrayal and banished him while a newly confident Sansa donned a striking new black dress, but what everyone remembers the most is the final, jaw-dropping, and head-popping, 10 minutes featuring the fight between Oberyn Martell and Gregor the Mountain Clegane, a fight that almost went the way many viewers hoped until the last few seconds when Oberyn got caught monologuing and paid the painful price. Number 7. Battle of the Bastards. Season 6. Containing the most sweeping, expansive and impressive battle sequences the show's ever done, and some of the best CGI work involving dragons mercilessly setting enemy ships ablaze. Battle of the Bastards saw Jon Snow and his undersized army of loyalists scrape and claw to retake Winterfell. It was a massive, emotional fight to the finish as Sansa saved the day with Littlefinger's smarmy aid and then fed Ramsay to his own starving mutts. And with both Danny and Jon overcoming their foul enemies, this chapter gave us perhaps the most decisive win for Guts heroes to date. Number 6. The Children. Season 4. Stannis and his army arrived at the Wall to save Jon Snow and the Night's Watch. Daenerys chained up her dragons and Tyrion set free by Jaime took a detour during his escape to grimly murder both Tywin and Shy. The children, excel that in Arya's cold silent refusal to put the Hound out of his misery. Number 5, Baylor, Season 1. Season 1's Baylor was a jumping off point for the show not playing by conventional story rules. Within the delicious audience contempt behind killing off Sean Bean's Ned Stark lay the blueprints for a saga that would run circles around us tragedy-wise. The series had already been great, but this was the shocking moment that got the misery ball rolling. Elsewhere, Rob made a vow to the grotesque Walder Frey. Tyrion played a drinking game with Bronn and Shy, and Daenerys unwittingly lost her unborn child after seeking out dark magic to save a dying of Khal Drogu. Number 4, The Winds of Winter, Season 6. With one of the most suspenseful and mercilessly explosive sequences on the show to date, The Winds of Winter wonderfully paid off a two-season storyline that had started to drag. Cersei, choosing violence like she loves to do, purged King's Landing of just about every name character, including, unfortunately, her last remaining child, and ascended to the Iron Throne with Caburn as her hand. Meanwhile, Daenerys finally set sail for Westeros, with a larger force than ever, now under her control, and on top of that, it was solidified that Arya's two-season arc over in Bravos was truly over. Via a throat slit, as she returned to Westeros with a new bag of tricks and wiped out the entire Freymail line. All in all, the best season finale the show's ever done. Number 3, The Reigns of Castamere, Season 3, The Red Wedding stands as one of the diabolical bloodlettings in TV history. Fans unspoiled by the books were filmed by those who'd read up, so as to preserve their shock and misery for all time. Viewers left the reigns of Castamere feeling hollowed out, and that was the exact intention. Writers producers D.B. Weiss and David Bennett mentioned, at the very outset of the show, that if the series could last just long enough for them to film The Red Wedding, they would be happy, 
as it was the moment in the books that made them decide that the story needed to be taken to TV. Number 2, Blackwater, Season 2. Would it be Rob, out to defeat the Lannisters and find justice for his father? No. It would be Tyrion who'd rise up. And in the epic, impressive All King's Landing battle episode, Blackwater, he'd not only put into action a dangerously clever plan involving wildfires so as to wipe out Stannis' ships, but he'd be the one to rally the citizens and to fight for their city after Joffrey tucked his tail and ran. Boats exploded. The Hound fled when he saw fire and Cersei prepared to poison herself and Tommen. Number 1. Hard Home. Season 5. The way Season 5 was going. Still great TV, but not the best Game of Thrones had offered. We don't think anyone expected it to deliver an episode as mighty as Hard Home. What a chilling, insane final 20 minutes director Miguel Sapochnik delivered unto us as the Night's King, unleashed a literal avalanche of ferocious undead minions on the last remaining frozen holdout of Mance Raider's wildlings, it brought the White Walkers to the forefront of the series in terrifying fashion and further helped solidify Jon Snow as the show's ultimate hero, not only proving that he was right in his attempt to unite enemy factions, but that he was, as shown in Season 4's The Watches on the Wall, an action-ready, bad, ass.